Well, well welcome, Bobby. And we're going to talk about yet another one of our impossible healings. Mm -hmm. But first, I just want to talk about the fact in your family, in your family, and we're dealing with somebody not in your family about this impossible healing, but in your family, you are known as Magic Mimi, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> and that's because you do this weirdo unseen therapist thing and they don't really know what you do, but you get results. Right. And I mean, talk about that for a moment, would you? Well, um, <clears throat> my daughter one time had basically a frozen neck and shoulder and we worked through that in about an hour and a half. She said, I don't know what you did, but everything works. And then my granddaughter had um, a neck spasm. She does gym gymnastics. And we worked on that, you know, 20 minutes and it was gone. And she just looked at me like, what are you doing? So um, we were having a conversation one time and my granddaughter says, yeah, Zoe and I call you Magic Mimi. <laughs> I thought, okay, I don't know, but uh, I said, I'm not magic, but I just know a few things that, that help people, that's all. All right. So to move on then to our impossible healing, mm -hmm. you have a very, very, very close friend who has a grandson, Max. Yes. Who had constipation in spades for years. Talk about the severity of it. And then we'll talk about what you did and so on. We get together a lot with the grandkids. So, you know, I kind of see what the dynamics are there quite a bit. And I would say he's 12. And for at least four years, they've been dealing with issues of chronic constipation where it'd be days. And over the years, they've tried, um, you know, different drinks and stuff or different supplements. And as soon as it'd be read regular on any kind of basis he would refuse the drinks and supplements i mean just stop it um exactly let, me, the, let, me, let me interject ahead. just interject in one second he would literally try to hold it in he would just I, keep I, he uh, would prevent himself from going so i don't know um i i don't know if, how you'd describe try but he would basically prevent himself from going do anything he could not to go so i i don't know if it's a conscious i have to do this or if it's in response to something okay but this went on for four years and he would get as you would expect ill pain all kinds of things going on right and if i recall it right there were some social issues involved as well. Right. Why don't you talk about those? Well, the social issues would be um, extremely foul flatulence and an occasional mishap that would cause an odor that people would wonder where it's coming from. So he would involve interactions or do things a certain way so people wouldn't notice it was from him. So it kind of... And then he didn't interact as much with people because he was afraid of them finding out. And being his age, if kids were to find out, the, the ridicule would have been horrendous. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Magic Mimi to the rescue. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, you did look, uh, most of this work surrogately. Yes. Now, now I, I think you tried a thing or two surrogately before you and I had a conversation about it. Right. And if I recall, you had minimal or not so much good results doing it that, you know, before our conversation. It, yes. Well, when my friend had told me that um, this particular incident a few weeks ago had been going on for four days. Normally it's about three days and things start moving. But this was the fourth day. She called me very concerned about him. He was in a lot of pain. And I thought, you know, let me see what I can do surrogately. So I was kind of working on his behalf and not seeing anything after a few days. And normally you, you see an effect within a few days. That's when I wrote the letter to you. Do you have any suggestions? And you suggested to go in as him. 
And since I am familiar with some of the family dynamics and siblings picking and, and some things have gone on, we, we do a lot of things together. So um, I think it was a Friday I contacted you. So Friday late evening, I work specifically on surrogately as him and what he may be feeling with some of these sibling interactions, you know, busy family, uh, just in, I felt a lot of emotions and working with the unseen therapist, I literally felt a lot of relief. And on Saturday, I did this extensively again for, you know, well over an hour, hour and a half, working as him, as a surrogate with the unseen therapist with different dynamics over the years that I had observed in the family. It's a good family, but everybody has their things. And as I noticed things bothered him, I felt a lot with the unseen therapist and then felt also the relief and peace with it. And I thought, well, I hadn't felt this the other way I had approached it, but going in as him, as you suggested, it was, it, I felt very powerful results and thought, well, let's see. I get a report from her on Monday that Sunday, everything was good with him. And then a few days later, I get another report saying he hasn't had any mishaps and he's going on a regular basis. And I thought, oh my gosh, who, who would have thought the you know, doing it a different way would have had such profound results. It has been over 10 days now and still going smoothly, let's say. <laughs> yeah. Well, I also understand that your, your friend, his grandmother, mm -hmm. as well as I think his mother, but anyway, um, um, are quite amazed Yes, at uh, at the social change as well, it, and it's, it's it's not as if I remember it right, it's not a social change that is just necessarily attached to the constipation odor right. kind of issue. Right, it was a a change overall anyway. A, 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 and yes, I I didn't mention that, but his interaction with his siblings has been much more on it. Um, a proper social aspect you know it, his interactions has been more loving less agitated less reactive he's he's just when the siblings go he goes ah oh, you're being dumb and he walks away instead of it escalating into a fight he has been um, much more um, agreeable to situations and things happening, it, the regular family dynamic, he has been just kind of going with the flow instead of so reactive as before. Uh, she said, I can't believe how, how lovingly, he, lovingly he's reacting to things. He used to hug a lot and you know come and sit by mom and stuff and he stopped doing that and now he's back to doing that. So there's, there's a lot of the social interaction that has improved tremendously with maybe just resolving the social conflicts with the unseen therapist. I don't know. Well, the unseen therapist is love, is peace, right. et cetera. And, and we hear this reflected often. And of course, if we are holding it in and all this other kind of constipational stuff, this is a phys arguably a physical manifestation right. of a lot of other lack of peace, if you will. Right. Uh, things just aren't going along the way they should, so to, so right. to speak. So. Well, the way he thinks they should. And all of it, my, uh, this person's granddaughter, I'm trying to keep it all straight, her daughter was saying, you know, I, 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 she was concerned about what she was doing wrong. And I told her in a conversation that it's not about you, it's how he's responding to you. He's just trying to figure out his own little world and that he doesn't understand. And this has they have a pretty good family dynamic. So I said, you know, it's, it's his perception. And maybe if we can work with that, we can resolve whatever his conflicts are with how he perceives it. And apparently it has, so. Yeah. Well, one of the things we talk about a lot in optimal EFT is that it's, it's never what happens that's the real issue. It's always right. our response to it. So. 
the sibling rivalry and all the other stuff that goes on with Max, um, the young boy, um, all that stuff, it happens in everybody's world anyway, in one way, shape, or form. We have all this conflict going on out there. But it's always our response to it. And when we can shift the response to a more peaceful thing, ah, magic happens. Magic Mimi happens, okay. <laughs> Come on. But anyway, all I care about is that this method has helped a young boy re hopefully resolve I mean, there may be aspects, and, and I asked her to keep track of if anything starts surfacing, that we address, okay, what's going on that may be upsetting him again. Maybe he'd be reverting back to that. But I said, it, for it to be, he, he has never gone 10 days. And Max was two or three days without issues. And we are now 10 days beyond that with a totally, completely changed little boy. I mean... So it's, it's pretty amazing. And his mother is just, I don't know what's going on here, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Bobby, thank you so much.